my name is Dr. Aidan Elliott and this is the Complete Guide to Shakespeare. Welcome to the fourth video of Four Design to give you an understanding of the main themes in Shakespeare's tragedy Romeo and Juliet. The final theme is love. I'll discuss its role in the story and highlight key quotes that you can use in tests, essays and examinations. Love is mentioned 94 times in the play the second highest in any of Shakespeare's play, only Two Gentlemen of Verona has more. And as we will see, love will overcome the hatred between the Montague and Capulet families, although not in the way that the characters expect. The first type of love in the play is Petrarchan love, typified by a man, Romeo, who is depressed because he's in love with a woman, Rosaline, who is unattainable. He is out of her favour where I am in love. Favour means approval, but can also mean face and sight. She does not like him, and he cannot see her face. This sort of love is a harmless teenage infatuation that is focused on Romeo's own inner feelings. So, although Rosaline is a Capulet, no conflict is likely to occur yet, because Romeo's infatuation is essentially private. Romeo's friend Benvolio then tries to shake him out of his infatuation by suggesting that there are far more beautiful women in Verona than Rosaline. Compare her face with some that I shall show, and I will make thee think thy swan a crow. He uses a stark metaphor of women as birds of contrasting colours, white and black. And Benvolio's prediction turns out to be prophetic. As soon as Romeo sees Juliet at the Capulet feast, he says, So shows a snowy dove trooping with crows. He has taken Benvolio's black-white imagery and developed it. The use of the dove image is important. It's a bird that is white, meaning purity, but it's also emblematic of peace, a much-needed quality in Verona. And when he speaks to Juliet, the love imagery becomes overtly religious. If I profane with my unworthiest hand this holy shrine, the gentle sin is this. My lips, two blushing pilgrims, stand to smooth that rough touch with a tender kiss. Profane means to treat with disrespect. Saints are worshipped at shrines and pilgrims travel to worship in holy places. So in this context, his lips metaphorically become pilgrims, worshipping. And the way lips worship is not to pray or to touch hands, but to kiss. The previous four lines are actually the beginning of a sonnet. That's a love poem of 14 lines with three blocks or stanzas of four lines ending with a rhyming couplet. Normally the man would deliver this sonnet un uninterrupted to the object of his love. But notice that Juliet speaks the second set of four lines and then they share the remaining six. In particular, they share the rhyming couplet at the end. This tells us that Juliet is not a passive object, but is engaging with Romeo. It is an indication that she finds him as attractive as he finds her. After they've fallen in love, Juliet develops the bird imagery to highlight the difference between what is wild and free and what is imprisoned. Oh, for a falconer's voice to lure this tassel gentle back again. The metaphor here describes Juliet wanting to be a falconer who can call her bird to come back to her. A tassel gentle is a male goshawk, it's a bird of prey. This metaphor sums up the state of mind of these two lovers. They want to be free, yet they are constrained by circumstance. Romeo and Juliet's love then evolves to include Juliet's awakened sexual desire. Oh, I bought the mansion of a love but not possessed it, and though I am sold, not yet enjoyed. But it's not sexual attraction alone. She mixes love, sex and marriage with ownership. Romeo and Juliet become each other's property. The opposite of being free as a bird. The sexual attraction element here is conveyed by the verb enjoyed. Earlier in the play, Romeo and Juliet's falling in love had given the friar an idea. Their love could overcome the hatred between their families. 
for this alliance may so happy prove to turn your household rancour to pure love. This was wishful thinking. Romeo and Juliet's love was unable to overcome the intensity of group hatred without them dying. Ultimately, the power of love cannot fully resolve the tensions between love and hate without the deaths of Romeo and Juliet. And their story ends where it began, with a kiss. Thus, with a kiss, I die. And Juliet then tries to kill herself by kissing Romeo's lips. I will kiss thy lips, haply some poison yet doth hang on them. This is ironic because it is the poisonous words coming from the lips of the Montagues and Capulets which has caused this tragedy in the first place. Her final act is to kill herself with a dagger when she finds there is no poison on his lips. You may be familiar with the idea that God loved the world so much that he sacrificed his son, Jesus Christ, so that the sins of the world could be forgiven. Here, Romeo and Juliet are sacrificed so that their families can be reconciled. So in summary, the lesson of this story is, even when people are divided by group hatred, they can be united by love between individuals. But this is not a sentimental love story. This unification only occurs when the two lovers die. So do look out for some of these features as you read, watch and study the play and I hope this brief video has given you some new insights that will help you to get greater enjoyment from Romeo and Juliet. Give a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and subscribe now so that you never miss any of my future posts.